Welcome to this audio flip chart on the three effects of managerial overconfidence on corporate investment decision making. My name is Manfred Frühwirth. I'm professor of finance at WU Wien, which is Vienna University of Economics and Business. The purpose of this audio flip chart is to illustrate by what mechanisms the overconfidence of managers affects the investment decisions of a company. As is well known from neoclassical and standard corporate finance, the corporate investment decision should be made based on the net present value, short NPV. The NPV requires two parameters, the expected cash flows of the investment project and the discount rate. For the discount rate, one should use the cost of capital. When we talk about the cost of capital in corporate investment decision making, we usually mean the weighted average cost of capital, which is also called the WAG. The flip chart shows these two drivers explicitly or implicitly. On the horizontal axis, we see the discount rate, so the WAG. On the vertical axis, we have the net present value, symbolized by NPV. Looking at the WAG, with a wide behavioral corporate finance horizon, there are two different versions of the WAG. One is the fundamental WAG. This is the WAG that is appropriate for the risk of the investment project. The other version is the WAG that is charged to the company by the capital market. This is the cost of capital that the shareholders and the debt holders are charging to the company. This can be calculated implicitly based on the stock prices and bond prices. In a neoclassical corporate finance setting, these two versions of the WAG have to be identical. This is different in the behavioral corporate finance world, including a world with overconfident managers, as we will see. On this flip chart, in black, we see the true NPV function. This is the objective NPV function. This curve shows the NPV as a function of the WAC, using the correctly estimated cash flows from the investment project. As is well known in finance, the higher the discount rate, the lower the net present value. The black horizontal position is the true fundamental WAG. This is the WAG appropriate for the level of risk of this investment project. And as we assume rational investors, there is no difference between the true fundamental WAG and the true WAG that is charged to the company by the capital market. So the black position also represents the true WAG charged to the company by the capital market. Evaluating the NPV curve at this true WAG gives a true NPV in the amount of NPV zero. Now, managerial overconfidence has an impact on the perceptions of the managers, both concerning the expected future cash flows from the project and concerning the WAC. Altogether, there are three potential effects. The first effect deals with the expected future cash flows from the project. Overconfident managers overestimate the quality and the success of their investment projects. They are too optimistic and too much convinced about their projects. As a result, they overestimate the expected future cash flows from their projects. This yields for each discount rate a too high NPV. This first effect is illustrated on the flip chart in blue you can see that the NPV curve is shifted upwards. 
due to the overestimation of the cash flows, the managers do not see the true NPV curve in black, but they see the blue NPV curve. Specifically, evaluating the NPV function at the true WAG, which is the black horizontal position, you can see that this effect, of course, increases the NPV. The managers perceive an NPV of NPV1 instead of NPV0. So the managers perceive the project as more favorable than what it really is. This is always the case with the cash flow effect. The second and third effect deal with the WAC. Both effects result from a discrepancy between the manager's perception of the WAC and the true WAC. In both versions of the WAC, explained before, there may be a misperception by the managers due to their overconfidence. Therefore, with the fundamental WAC, we have to distinguish between the true fundamental WAC and the fundamental WAC that is perceived by the overconfident managers. Similarly, for the WAC charged by the capital market, we must distinguish between the true WAC charged by the capital market and the WAC charged by the capital market as it is perceived by the overconfident managers. Let us investigate these WAC effects in more detail. The second effect of managerial overconfidence deals with the fundamental WAC. As the overconfident managers also underestimate the risk of their investment projects, they think that a lower WAC would be appropriate to discount the cash flows from the project. From our neutral outside perspective, this means that the managers are using a fundamental WAC that is lower than the true fundamental WAC. This effect is illustrated on the flip chart in red. In the manager's opinion, the NPV curve should be evaluated not at the black horizontal position, but at the lower WAC, namely at the red horizontal position. Calculating the NPV with the overestimated cash flows and the underestimated fundamental WAC, you can see that this effect further increases the NPV, namely from NPV1 to NPV2. So managers that use the fundamental WAC as the discount rate perceive this project even more favorable. This is always the case if the managers use the fundamental WAC. Let us come to the third effect of managerial overconfidence. This effect deals with the WAC charged to the company by the capital market. As a result of their overconfidence, the managers overestimate the future dividends that the company can pay out to the shareholders. Like many people on the stock market, they compare the expected future dividends with the current stock price to calculate the expected return of the stock. This represents the cost of equity charged to the company by the stock market. However, as they overestimate the future dividends, they also overestimate the cost of equity charged to the company by the stock market. Therefore, they perceive a cost of equity charged by the capital market that is higher than what is fundamentally justified. Moreover, due to their overconfidence, the managers underestimate the probability that the firm may go bankrupt in the future. This makes them overestimate the expected future coupon payments and the expected repayments of their bonds outstanding. By comparing the overestimated 
expected future payments to the bondholders with the current bond price, they can calculate the expected yield to maturity. This expected yield to maturity is the cost of debt charged to the company by the capital market. As they overestimate the expected future cash flows to the bondholders, they also overestimate the cost of debt charged by the capital market. Therefore, they come to the perception that the cost of debt charged by the capital market is higher than what is fundamentally justified. Both effects increase the manager's perception of the WAG that is charged to the company by the capital market. If the managers use for their investment decisions the WAG charged to the company by the capital market, they evaluate the MPV curve at a too high WAG. This could be, for instance, the green horizontal position. The impact on the NPV can also be seen on the flip chart in green. The perceived NPV goes down significantly to NPV3. So in contrast to the first two effects, this effect makes the project look less favorable than what it really is. This effect always takes place if the managers use the WAG that is charged to the company by the capital market. Summing up, we saw in this audio flip chart that altogether there are three potential effects of managerial overconfidence on the investment decisions of the managers. First, the overestimation of the expected future cash flows. Second, the underestimation of the fundamental WAC, which means the risk-adjusted WAC. And third, the overestimation of the WAC charged to the company by the capital market. The first two effects make the project look better than appropriate. The third one makes it look worse. Investigating the overall impact of these three effects on the NPV, the overall impact depends on the precise situation, which means the data prevailing. So in general, we cannot say whether managerial overconfidence increases or decreases the NPV that the managers perceive. If the managers use the perceived fundamental WAC, they will clearly see the project too positive. In that case, both the cash flow effect and the WAC effect go into the same direction. The perceived MPV definitely goes up compared to the true data. This may even create an overinvestment problem. If the true MPV is negative, but because of these two effects of overconfidence, the managers perceive a positive MPV. Then the managers implement an investment project, even though it actually destroys shareholder value. If, however, the managers use the perceived WAG charged to the company by the capital market, the overall result is less clear. The cash flow effect makes them overestimate the investment project, whereas the too high perceived WAG that is charged by the capital market makes them underestimate the investment project. In that case, the WAG effect may even heal an overinvestment problem caused by the overestimated cash flows. The key question is, which of these two effects is stronger? If the cash flow effect is stronger than the WAG effect, the perceived MPV goes up. This may again result in an overinvestment problem. 
If, however, the WAC effect is stronger than the cash flow effect, the perceived MPV goes down. This may even result in an underinvestment problem. Underinvestment problem means that the true MPV is positive, but due to the overestimation of the WAG charged by the capital market, the managers perceive a negative MPV. In that case, the managers do not implement an investment project, even though it would increase the shareholder value. We can learn from this that theoretically managerial overconfidence can create both an overinvestment problem and an underinvestment problem. Often empirical literature shows that overconfident managers perform more investment projects than rational managers. Therefore, in practice, obviously the first two effects seem to be stronger than the third one. This is clearly the case if the managers use the fundamental WAG. In the chart shown on the flip chart, we see that the true NPV, which is NPV zero, is positive. And no matter whether you use the fundamental WAG or the WAG charged by the capital market, the perceived MPV is also positive. So in this situation, the overconfident managers do not come to the wrong investment decision. There is neither an overinvestment problem nor an underinvestment problem. The problem is, in practice, you cannot be sure that the investment decision will not be reversed by managerial overconfidence. Therefore, managers should try to see their investment projects and the cost of capital realistically. This is a prerequisite to make sure that they do not make wrong investment decisions and thereby destroy shareholder value. I hope you enjoyed this audio flip chart. Thank you very much for watching.